Hey everybody, it's Bandor, and I'm here again to do another video on PBR materials. So it's a very exciting thing. PBR has finally been released uh, onto the Second Life grid. It's on every sim now. Uh, but currently it only works in a few different viewers. So it works in the released version of the Second Life viewer. It also works in Alchemy, and it works in an alpha, or maybe they're calling it a beta now, I'm not sure, release of Firestorm. So it's not in the main release of Firestorm, but you can pretty easily get to the alpha version of it. Um, there's a group you have to join. I'll try and post that into uh, in the comments. So you just join that group and you can download the link from their notices uh, to download the alpha or beta version that has it. And I'm using the beta version right now. That's what you see here on screen, uh, the alpha version. It's alpha version, yeah, it says it up on the screen, alpha 64.7.0.1.72562. This is from November 25th, I believe is when it came out. So there may be a more current version available than that, but that's the one I'm using right now. Uh, and everything seems to work, the normal stuff from Firestorm seems to work just like you would expect it to work. The only one difference that I've noticed is when you edit something, so you right click on it to edit it, uh, it doesn't just edit it. There's two choices. You either can edit the material directly or you can edit the object. So if you want to edit the object to get this panel, you have to click that extra interstitial button. But that's the only thing I've really noticed that's, oops, as I slam into my microphone, that's the only thing I've ever, I've, I've noticed so far that's really different. So it, it works and behaves just like the regular Firestorm and I'm not having any issues, but it does PBR. So you can see in this view, this uh, cabinet and this bed. I'm, I'm working on a Murphy bed. That bed actually, it's going to fold up into the cabinet. That part's not working right now. I'm just working on doing some texturing for it. And it's going to have these side cabinets that go with it. So I'm, I'm doing all of this directly in Substance Painter. You could do it in Blender or there's other programs as well that allow you to create materials and export them as GLTF, which is the format that you need to export them for um, to import them into Second Life, that is the PBR, physically based rendering materials, uh, that is. If you didn't have a PBR capable viewer like the current Second Life or the alpha version of Firestorm or Alchemy, and you were just in regular Firestorm or something else, this would just look like plywood. You wouldn't be able to see these textures. But because I'm using the PBR capable version, you can actually see it has a lot of detail, it has a lot of reflections, it looks pretty gorgeous, and then if you look at the the actual stuff on the bed over here, it's even more incredible. Look at the reflectiveness of this, the highly polished reflections, and everything that you see here. Um, and this is done with PBR materials, and it's so simple and so, so easy to do, and the output is amazing. So, um, the one problem I ran into though, was, yeah, okay, so I can import these PBR materials and I can apply them to my furniture, but when I sell a piece of furniture, um, I don't sell it with just one wood texture and one bedding texture. I want to be able to sell it to my customers with a bunch of different wood options. So you may have 10 or, 10 or more different styles of wood to choose from. I, I want to do it with a bunch of different bedding options with different styles or different patterns, different colors different color themes so that my customers have choices and they can make it work better with uh, with their own home. And some of those texture choices I leave uh, blank so that the customers can then colorize it however they want to. The problem with that is there's no PBR texture changer available in Second Life right now. So on the old system, I use a texture changer from a vendor that I bought that allows me to apply multiple different textures to the object, export that data, put it in a note card, and then put the note cards into the furniture. And then people, when they click on it, they get a menu of those choices and they can pick the different textures. Like they could pick oak or pine or walnut or cherry for the woods, or they could pick black, blue, orange, green, or whatever for the different bedding options that would be provided for them. And so that doesn't exist in Second Life now for PBR materials. So I created it. 
I said, okay. I, I went to a couple of vendors who make them, asked, and I didn't get responses, and I really needed this right away. So I've gone ahead and created my own system for doing it. So as you can see here, um, on this cabinet, for example, if, let's look at the cabinet. If I click on the cabinet, I get a menu that pops up and it says dump data. That's that's the first part of this, which we're not going to be talking about right now. Uh, I'll show you that in a minute. The, 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 and that when I'm when I ship this to my customers, it won't have that in it. That'll be gone. So you won't see that. So you'll click basically and this menu will come up and it says select select from the menu um, one of the materials and here you go these are the different wood materials that i have rhododendron white maple oak palisander black pink darkness gold edged antique ao and black so let's pick one let's pick maple and there you go you see the texture changed just like it would with a regular texture changer i'm going to remove that script so it doesn't keep popping up the data dump. Okay. So now when I click that, it won't pop up anymore. Okay, so we'll pick wood. And then let's pick uh, gold edged. So you can see it's wood with some gold at the very edges. It looks kind of cool. Like the edges are worn down. Let's pick a different one. Let's try antique. Let's try black pink because I think that looks kind of cool. Black pink. Ta da! Great. So I have that same script in, in this piece too, but let's go ahead and take it out for now. Data dump. I don't need it. And then let's put the, uh, let's do the texture changer on this. So click it. Now I have two choices I have wood and bedding. So let's pick wood. Let's do the same one black pink. And of course, nothing happens. What if I do a wood maple? That works. Why didn't black pink work? Oh, there it goes. For some reason it didn't work the first time, but it worked this time. Hmm. Interesting. Anyway, so th there it is. Let me try another one just to make sure. Wood, gold edged, wood. I'll go back to the black pink. I call it black pink because it's black and pink, and I didn't want to put and in there. Um, so it's a black wood with pink edges. And then let's change some of the bedding. Click it, click bedding, and we're going to do uh, blue quilted. There you go. There's, I have a light shining on this. That's what this line right here is. It's from this, there's an invisible light over here shining down. So you can see the light reflecting here so that's the blue quilted if i want to change it we'll pick bedding and we'll go to gold see it's pretty quick hmm. i might have a mistake in there do it again it looks like i have a mistake in one of my files that i need to change so when i get to that part of the menu the Working on the menuing part, I can show you. We can fix it. Let's try a diff different one. Let's do silk. Okay, this is the option I called silk. And the, the names are arbitrary. I make them up. So you'll be able to make them up and be whatever you want. Okay. So you can see it actually is changing the, the textures. It's not, it's not textures anymore. They're materials. So it's actually changing the PBR material for this. And so what is a PBR material on here? If you edit your object and you go to the texture tab, you'll see under material, you have option of textures. You click on that drop down, you'll see there's textures, PBR metallic roughness and media. Textures is what their Firestorm is choosing to call the old way. In the Second Life viewer, it doesn't say textures here. It says Blin Fong. B-L-I-N-N-P-H-O-N-G, which is the name given by the industry to that style of using the diffuse, normal, and specular textures to do materials. The new way is called PBR, which stands for Physically Based Rendering Materials. So this is PBR Metallic Roughness. That's the type of um, materials that second life uses and 
so if I pick that, you can see there's this. It doesn't show an image now. I'm hoping that at some point in the future it will actually show an image here. Um, but it looks a lot like you would do today. You just take uh, whatever you want the material to be here and you drop it in. So um, I'm going to show you how to do that in a second. So the first thing this is just showing you that I do have a texture changer that generates a menu. So it gives us the different menu of, in this case, I have a menu for wood and I have a menu for bedding. If I wanted to have a different menu that was just the pillows, I could do that, or just the sheets, I could do that. Or if I wanted one that does everything all together and call it theme, I could have that menu as well. So whatever menus you wanna have right now, it only supports one level of menu. So if you wanna have sub menus, I, haven't, I don't have it doing that today, but uh, that's something that I'm gonna be working on. The version today is just one level of menus but it does allow you to have multiple menus. Okay, and then uh, when you pick it, it shows you the list of your different texture options, and those are from the note cards that we create. Um, but I do something different with note cards, so once you use the note card, you, you don't have to keep it. And I'll show you about that in a minute. So let's go, let's pick uh, white. There you go. So, you can see the texture changer is actually working. Now let's uh, talk about the other scripts. So my system is going to consist of three scripts. So one is the runtime script that you use to actually let the user pick and change the textures. That's the one we've just been looking at. There is one other script that I give you that allows you to generate the texture changer note cards from the materials that you have applied to your product. So I'm going to um, upload a new set of materials for the bed, and then I'll show you how, to, how we're going to create the note cards for that. So let's switch over to Adobe Substance Painter. So this is Substance Painter. This is the new material set that I've created for the bedding. It's, a, it's going to go with that black pink uh, wood, I think. So it's kind of a pinkish purple pattern here for the pillows, the back two pillows, the blanket, the sheets um, all have this kind of purple color, which I based, it's a linen cloth pattern, but the color of it comes from sampling the colors here in this image. So uh, you can do that in Substance Painter. And so me, I'll show you if I can get back to my, there it is. So for example, on pillow one, which is this pillow in the back, Let's, I want to look at pillow three. Pillow three is this pillow here in the front. So if you scroll down in the information, you see this color. All I did was come here and it gives you this little pop-up and there's an eyedropper. So I use that eyedropper and then I just sampled this color and it changed it to that color. And then I, I did this thing called instantiate where you can instantiate across texture sets. So I instantiated this across these other purple pieces and it applied the same material to all th four pieces. So I didn't have to go to each one and change it. Uh, I also did that with my pillows. As long as it has the, the information is the same, you can instantiate it. So if you use the same material, the same colors, the same tiling, rotation, whatever, uh, you can then instantiate it to other parts of your model and uh, saves you some time. So what's important here is how I how I named things. So I have saved this substance painter file and I've called it Murphy bed final because this is, this is the Murphy bed. So I've called it Murphy bed final. Um, in, in this case, it's actually the bedding, right? It's not the whole Murphy bed. So why don't I rename this? I'm going to call this um, Murphy bed bedding. Because it's just the bedding. Did it, is it renaming? It should be naming. Oh, it's, it's doing it. It's a little slow. Okay. Hmm. I don't know what, it doesn't look like it saved it. There it goes. Okay, change the name up here. That's what I was waiting for was to change the name here. So now it's called Murphy Bed Dash Bedding. That's the name of this substance painter file. Then up here in your texture set list, these are the names of the materials which correspond to the parts of the bed. 
So I made sure when I named my materials in Blender that I named them for the part of the bed that they're going to go on. So I have in this model more things than just this bedding. I actually have everything. That's why I called it final. I just had them turned off. You can see the cabinets here, the, the cabinet for the bed is here, and this extra cabinet, which I don't use, is there, but this is the panel that will be here when it's closed. So this is kind of the closed version. This is the open version. So I'm texturing them all at the same time. But I don't actually use this cabinet. I just use this panel. Um, so yeah, I don't like calling this a bedding now that I think about it because it has everything in it, so that's confusing. So let's just go back to the other, the other name, which was final. Let's just keep it like that. But I could, if I wanted to, if I knew I was only going to be exporting parts of the model, I could rename the save, um, and then it'll carry over into my output. That's that's one of the cool things about Substance Painter, other than being slow. I think it's slow because I got so much stuff going on on my computer. There we go. All right. Um, to reiterate that point, this. When I export my in, my materials for use in Second Life, the name of that material is going to be based on a combination of things. It's going to be based on this name that you give it here when you save your Substance Painter file <laughs> and the, the part that's being worked on or the actual material. And so if you wanted to have your name be meaningful in Second Life, Say, for example, if I'm exporting everything, then I, this name would make sense, right? But if I am only just going to be importing the bedding, then I might want to do a save as beforehand and save it as the name I like the name I use where it's, I called it bedding because that would be more meaningful in Second Life, right? But for now, it's fine because it's not that bad. I think, I think we'll survive. So this is what I'm exporting. Um, but I don't care about these. So we won't actually export the wood. We're only going to export the bedding. So you just go to File, Export Texture. And then you make sure that in your output template, you select GLTF PBR Metallic Roughness. That's, that's the output that we want it to be in, the format we want it in to be in. And then I don't need the bed base. I don't need bed base closed. I don't need bed cabinet. I don't need cabinet, and I don't need leg. The only parts I want are the blanket, which in Second Life, for some reason, I called comforter. But I should have probably called it blanket, but this is only one thing I did that way, so it's not confusing. If I renamed everything, it would be, it would be so so confusing I, I wouldn't be able to figure it out. So try to be consistent. So I, I have the names blanket, mattress, pillow one, pillow two, pillow three, pillow four, and sheets. And that corresponds to blanket, pillow one, pillow two, pillow three, pillow four, sheet, and mattress. All right. So I didn't actually export that, so let's go ahead and export it. I will hit export. It's going to do some work. It's going to generate all the output, and then it's going to dump them out. And it dumps them out into a directory called export. So now we go back to Second Life, and now I'm going to import that. You just go to build, and since I want to import all of those materials that I just created at one time, we're going to do a bulk import. So go to build, upload, bulk. And then in the drop down over here for all files, we want to select GLTF files. And here we go. These are the ones that are in here. So I called this Second Life project, I called it Murphy Bed Final. Not, this is what I used to call it. Final, I hope. But now it's called Final. So there's two different files that show up here. Um, how do you know which one to open? <laughs> it's, they have the same symbol. They're, they're both GL, one is a GLTF and the other one is a GLB. We don't use GLB, we only use GLTF. Well, looking at it here it doesn't tell me which one's which. The only way I know is by the size. So if you look at this one, it says the size is 240 kilobytes, or sorry, 24 kilobytes. And the size of this one is 85 megabytes. That's the one we want to use. It's always the bigger one. You can see down here, this one was 24 kilobytes and this one was... 85.6 megabytes. So this is the one I would have used, but this is the one I want to use because it's the same name that I saved my Substance Painter file as, 
and that's the one I want. So that's my that's kind of like a zip file for materials. That's what this GLTF is. It's kind of a zip file for materials. So you click on that to open it. And then it takes it a little bit to think. It's analyzing what's inside there and it's going to come up with a pop-up. Oh no, it's actually importing all of them. So it's just, there's no pop-up. If I was just doing one material, it would come up with a pop-up and then in that drop down on that pop-up, I would select which of the sub materials like the pillow one, pillow two, pillow three that I wanted to export it and I would be doing them one at a time. Um, but since I did bulk import, it's importing them all. So let's go ahead and see where it's putting them. So it puts them in your inventory in a new folder called materials. And here they are, Murphy bed final, Murphy bed final, Murphy bed final. So that's the ones, in, they're still coming, see. But then in parentheses, it puts the name of the material from Substance Painter, which was in my, my texture set list, the, the names that I had applied, that's what's in parentheses here. So that this naming structure is from Substance Painter. And the first part is the name of the Substance Painter file that I saved it as, and the parentheses is the texture set item or the material part in Substance Painter. So that makes it very easy to figure out where these things go and what they apply to. So if I come over to my bed, right, let's take a look at my bed and let's just apply these to it. So it's not difficult to do, literally drag and drop. So I take Murphy bed final sheets and I drop it on the sheet part. I take the one called pillow four and I put it on pillow number four, pillow three, I put it on pillow three, pillow two, I put it on pillow two, pillow one, I put it on pillow one, mattress goes on the mattress part, and blanket goes on the blanket part, which in Second Life I actually called comforter. Right, so that's all that's involved in texturing it. Isn't that easy? So dropping that one thing on here, it basically drops several different things into Second Life for us. Uh, in the old system, that would be things like your diffuse texture, your normal for your bumpiness, and a specular for shininess. The new system uses some different things. It uses base base material. It does use a norm. It uses uh, roughness, metallic roughness. It uses emissive maps. It uses a few different maps than the old system. But you can see, I didn't have to worry about that. I didn't have to put each one on. I just took this one thing and dropped it on the part and it applied all of them for me automatically and it looks really, really good. Um, so that's how you get the texture onto the furniture. Well, and that, that's the limit of what Essel will do for us. Now this is where my texture changer comes in. So I want to, I provided a script and it's called PBR Materials Data Dump version 1.00 is the version I'm on right now. So you just edit this object Go to contents and then just drag this PBR material data dump script into the object. Okay, and then this is my, I, I have all of my owner messages routed to debug. Um, if you don't do that, they'll show up in nearby chat and I have them coming over here to a special debug window. But for you, they might show up in your in local chat or nearby chat. So all you do is you click this, and then it comes up with a menu that says dump data. Click dump data, and then it outputs all of this information right here. Um, you don't need to worry about this. This is just, uh, some, I think this is debug information that I should probably turn off, but uh, and it won't it won't be on in the final version. So you just get this dump out, which has a time stamp, and then it has um, a bunch of rows of information. Well, this is the material information for each of the parts of this piece of furniture. So this piece of furniture has a part called the bed cabinet. It has a part called the bed base. It has this part over here, which I'm calling bed, bed base closed. And then it has the, the parts for the bed, pillow one, pillow two, pillow three, pillow four, which I named P1, P2, P3, and four. It has a mattress. It has the sheet. And instead of calling it a blanket, I called it comforter. And you can see that here. And then I precede each of those words with PBR semicolon. So you can see PBR semicolon bed cabinet, PBR semicolon mattress. So it actually went through this part by part and dumped out 
this information for me. Now, where did it get this information? You have to put it into the object in the description field. So if I do edit link and I click on the blanket down here and I look at the description, it just says playing 18. You can make that be whatever you want. But down here in the description field, it says PBR semicolon comforter. That is where this comes from in here. And as far as my script is concerned, this can be anything you want. You can call this whatever you want. I, I suggest put PBR semicolon in front of it so that you know it's, um, it's a material. It's, it's for the material. So um, that's the format that I recommend, but you don't have to follow that. But So put PBR semicolon and then put some word that is meaningful for the part. So I should have said blanket. I said comforter. I could change it, but I've already created all of the files for this, and I've already saved all the data, so I'm not going to change it. I'm going to leave it at comforter. comforter. But it just shows it doesn't matter what you put here. The system doesn't care. You can call it whatever. It just has to be unique. You can't use the same name. Well, that's not true. It doesn't have to be unique if the material is the same. So for like, for example, the wood, I only have one wood material and that one wood material includes all of the different parts. That's the way I built the model. I wanted to have it so that it was easy to maintain. So um, I put the UV maps for all of these different parts of this wood, which are separate. Uh, there, It's a link set, but they're actually separate pieces. I was going to make it one piece and I just never got around to doing it. So each part of them, it has its own separate material. But I in in uh, Blender, you just name them the same. So I call this material uh, bed cabinet. So I, I name this bed cabinet. And when I put a material here, I use the same bed cabinet material. I use the same bed cabinet material, same bed cabinet material on all of the wood parts, except for the bed base, which I call bed base. And this one over here, which is the same thing as this, but the closed version, which is going to sit in this hole when the bed is in closed state. So I call that bed base closed. So my bed has three wooden parts. It has everything in the cabinet, which I call bed cabinet. It has the bed base down here in the open state, which I just call bed base. And then I have the bed base over here in the closed state, which I call bed base closed. So those are the three things. And then I have P1, P2, P3, P4, sheet, mattress, and I called it comforter. And so that's all you do is you just go through each of those and you apply that name into each one. So for the ones that have the same material, like all of the wood pieces in, in this cabinet have the same material, then I give it the same name. So you can see this is called PBR bed cabinet. And I gave this one the same description, PBR bed cabinet, PBR bed cabinet, PBR bed cabinet. And then there's a piece down here at the very bottom underneath everything, it's PBR bed cabinet. But for the two pieces that are different, it says PBR bed base. And this one says PBR bed base closed. It doesn't matter about uppercase, lowercase. It doesn't matter about anything except you cannot use a comma and you I think that's it. I think you just can't use a comma. Anything else I think is okay. Oh, no, you can't use a pipe symbol. You can't use a vertical pipe and you can't use a comma. So don't use either of those two characters and anything else is fine. So whatever you want to call it should be okay. Um, so that's the first step. First step is you have to name all of the parts. So go ahead and set up all of the names. And if the part uses the same material, give it the same name. Once you've done that, you drop this PBR material data dump script into your object. And again, you just click it and hit data dump or, or dump data, and it dumps this information out. And so then you just take all of this, and we're going to copy that and paste it into a note card. Well, I have my note cards uh, down here, and I'm going to add a, add a new one. So in my Murphy bed, I have a bunch of note cards down here that I'm working on. So, um, so I'm going to add and I'm just going to copy one of the ones that I had. So let's so find this is for the bed. I had, I have note cards down here for both the cabinet uh, and the bed. So let's find one that was for the bed. And since I'm doing the bedding, I'll take this one for the blue quilted. I'll copy it and I'm going to paste it. And then we'll talk about the, structure of the name of the note card for these. So these are your material note cards 
or the texture changer. And this is going to store information about what materials we have applied, the part name, and all that. And so I'm going to rename this one to um, let's just call that purple haze. Why not? So we're going to call that bedding purple haze. Now the structure of the name that you use for the note card is, is very specific. So the first part of it, you have to have PBR in uppercase, PBR colon. It looks for that on the note cards, and if that's not there, it won't do it. So the note card must begin with capital P, capital R, uh, B, sorry, capital P, capital B, capital R, colon, PBR, colon. After that, it's kind of up to you. The first parameter needs to be um, something that uniquely identifies this from other parts that you're working on. Um, and, you, and you need this. It does, you can put whatever you want to here. In this case, I put bed because I, the other one is called cabinet. So I have a cabinet and a bed that I'm working on. So I call this one bed. Um, I was originally going to use this in the menu, but I decided to not put it in the menu. Um, and, and there's reasons why there's reasons why I made these choices. It, it, it's can, more convenient for you to see this and know, oh, this note card is for the bed, and that note card is for the cabinet. If you didn't have this word in the name of the note card, and you were just looking at a bunch of note cards, you wouldn't know which note card goes to which part. So having the name in the note card name makes it easier for you later on <clears throat> to figure out which um, note card goes to which part. Now, you could be as fancy here as you want. You could call it Murphy Bed bed, something like that, um, or whatever. I just call it bed, and then I put, a, I put an asterisk at the end of that because I was originally I thought it was going to be a menu, but um, it ends up not being a menu. So the asterisk, asterisk is helpful if it's a menu so that when you when the menus are displayed, it displays that asterisk. It shows that it's a, it's a menu to the user. So, but you can put whatever you want in, in here. It doesn't really matter, but they're separated by colons. So there's four parameters and they're separated by colons. So the first parameter is PBR uppercase and then a colon. The second parameter is a, is a name for the thing that contains the materials. In this case, it's the bed. The other one is called cabinet. You don't have to put an asterisk at the end of that. If you don't want to, I did, but it doesn't matter. Then a colon. All right. So we have PBR. Oops, why is it putting zeros in there? Because I hit the zero key. I'm screwing everything up. All right, so the first parameter is PBR colon. The next one I have is bed, asterisk, and then a colon. Okay, the next two parameters are what define your menu and the menu item or the actual name of the material theme that you're creating. So the first one is the menu. So I want this to be in the bedding menu. So I call it bedding, B-E-D-D-I-N-G. And then I put an asterisk so that in the menu, there's an asterisk. So people see that they know it's a menu versus a menu item. Uh, right now we can't, we don't allow combining them. In this version of the script, you can't have menu items in a menu in the same menu. Just eventually I will, but right now for this version, it's, you can't. And there's only one level of menu. So you can't go another menu, colon, another menu, colon, another menu, colon. You will eventually, but right now, right now I don't do that. So right now it's only one level of menus. So this is bedding, asterisk, colon, and then what do you want the menu item to be that's going to give you the user the choice to pick this texture? So but what's the name of this texture set or this theme? So I call it purple haze. So again, four parameters. First one is PBR colon. Second one is a name for the, the device or the thing or the object. In this case, it's bed. First one is the menu. So this is a bedding. This means everything in here is the bedding versus the, the wood. And then the last one is what do you want people to pick from the menu to choose this set of textures, which I'm calling it purple haze. Okay, so that's the naming structure for that. Once you have it named, 
open it and then since I copied it it's already got it's already got the old information in here I can delete that then come back to this output from the dump data or do it again if you want to and, and just copy everything that came out I'll probably put something like a, a line above it and a line after that says delete you know, copy everything after this line and before the next one. I'll probably put something like that. Um, but for me, I didn't have it. So copy that, paste it into your note card. And then you need to get rid of everything before the PBR. So just delete everything from the P to the beginning of the line. And do that for every line you have. Don't delete anything else. And you don't need blank lines between each line. Oops. Or three more. Three, two, one. Okay, now, when it generates this, it's going link by link inside of that link set. And so this link set had, I think, 16, 16 parts to it, the bed. And so it created one line for each, uh, each part of the link set. If you have different textures on different faces on that part, it would also generate one line for each face. But on this model, I'm using um, all sides, so I'm putting one one material on all of the faces of that. There's really only one face, so um, it uses the all sides face. And so it's only, it puts one material on the whole part. So it's only going to, it's only going to generate one line. But if, if I had multiple faces, I can do that with this, and it will generate one line for each face. And the syntax of this will we'll explain that to you in just a second. Um, we'll reflect that. Okay. Now, an interesting thing to note is, well, let, well let's talk about the syntax of this first. So let's just break one of these down and I'll, and I'll show you the syntax. So um, there, the first parameter is this. That is the description on the part. So whatever you put in that part description, that's what's going to show up here. So you can call it whatever you want to call it, and that's going to show up here. It just needs to be meaningful to you. I like to put PBR in front of it so that I know it's from, uh, hang on, my TV kicked in and it's pretty loud. I'm going to go turn that off so you don't have to listen to it. Sorry, there's people in my house today and they're turning the TVs on. I, I let them know that I'm doing a video, but somehow the TVs got turned on and then everybody leaves and the TVs are still on and it interferes. And it's a problem because I did a video one day and I spent spent several hours working on a video and then I posted it and it got blocked because in the background there was like a movie on and it recognized the movie and I got a DCMA strike against it. So I don't want that to happen again. Anyway, all right, where were we? Oh yeah, the, the syntax. So the first parameter here, and these parameters are separated by um, the pipe symbol, which is this vertical pipe symbol here. Um, so the first parameter is whatever you put in the description on that part. The second description is the face number. Um, but if you're, if you're using one texture for the whole part, i.e. what we call the all sides, uh, you put a zero. Zero means face number zero, but all sides is actually, it's a negative one. So don't ask me. It's a negative one, but in the in the code, but put a zero. So um, if you're if you're just using one material for the whole thing, not the whole object, but the whole face on that individually linked part, um, like I did, I, you saw I just dragged one. I dragged it on the pillow. I dragged it on the other pillow. I dragged it on the blanket. I dragged. I didn't go to like um, the pillow and put three different textures on the pillow on three different parts of the pillow. I, I didn't do that. Um, because you can have, you know, like some, something like six or eight faces on an object and you can have a different, 
material on each of those faces. So in my model, I didn't make it that way. Uh, I made it so that every in every part of the model has only one face. So you use zero in that case. And then a pipe. And then the third parameter is the UUID or key of the material that is applied, currently applied, or not currently, but when you ran the dump, the material that you had applied at that point is what gets dumped out here. So my material texture, my material changer doesn't deal with anything other than the material that you apply. So if you change the parameters, like you, you change how intense something is, or you change the, um, any of the drop downs or dials or switches or whatever you, you, you did, you manipulated it in some way in Second Life. I don't capture any of that right now. I will eventually, but I just made this quick, down and dirty. So it just gets the material ID. It's like, which material did you put on here? Okay, that's what we're going to change. Uh, if you want something more complicated, I'll have to spend more time on the script and build it. But right now, no one's asked for that. And I don't need it uh, because I never deal with those things. When I make furniture, I just take, I do all my work in Substance Painter to get the, the material to look the way I want. And then I just drop it on the object. Um, so eventually, I may expand this to have more parameters. But for right now, it's just the material. So again, the four parameters, three, sorry, three parameters. The first parameter is the description of the linked part. The second description is zero if you have one material for the whole linked part or the face number if you have multiple faces with separate materials. And then the third is the UUID of the actual material file that was applied. Now, you don't need to know what the UUID is. You don't have to look it up. The system generates it for you. Um, it just has to be in your inventory, not the object. It doesn't have to be in the object. It just has to be in your inventory, and you have to like be the owner of it. Um, I think there might be a restriction that it has to be full perm, but I'm not 100% sure on that one. I haven't checked it. Um, if you want to distribute these things, maybe it does have to be full perm. I, I don't know. We'll figure that out as, as we go. But, um, but that's what it is. So this is the UUID of the texture or the material in my inventory. Now, it generated this data for me. But let's say I wanted to change it. So uh, yeah, you know, that's the wrong material. I don't want that material in there. I could then, I could go back and reapply the material and then reapply the script and then click it and do dump data, get this information, copy it and put it back into the note card. I could do all that. Or if I have the material and I know what the material is, I can simply go to the material, which is right here. And in this case, let's say I wanted to do the blanket, right? So if I wanted to put it, I wanted to get, update this with a different blanket material. Like I wanted to use this one. All I gotta do is come here in my inventory, find the one I want, right click it, copy the UUID, and then I can come up here and find the line for the blanket, which in this case is comforter, change this and then paste. And I'm not gonna do that, but I will paste it right here so you can see it. See, there it is right there, 87132025, and that's the same number as this 871302. So, so it is the right UUID, but I didn't have to do that. I could have, constructed this note card completely manually, right? I could go into the note card and say, okay, I know what my parts are. I have four parts and I know they're named this. So I'm going to list them, put the first one, the second one, the third one, the fourth one. I know they all use zero. So I'll put zero on all of them. And then I have the textures right here. So here's the first one, copy, paste. Here's the second one, copy, paste. Here's the third one. Copy. I could very quickly and easily <clears throat> manually generate these, but this script saves you that time, saves you the time of manually creating. That's all it's really doing. So again, you put the PBR data load, data dump, what's it called? PBR material data dump script. You put that into your object, you click the object, it generates this output, you copy the output into this note card, delete everything before PBR, <clears throat> and then save it. Okay. 
Then, once you save it, just edit your object. Go find the, the, the note card that we just had, which is down here. It's called PBR Bed Bedding Purple Haze. Drop that into your object. Now, because I have my second script, or th third script in this, the third script I have also in here, that script now runs. And I'll tell you about that one now. So we're done with the we're done with the data dump script. So I can actually delete the data dump script, but I'll wait and do that in a minute. I'll go ahead and get rid of it. I don't need it in there, so I don't want it to run. All right. So uh, I'm still not ready to run because I have I have created my note card. I put my note card. Sorry, created my note card, and I put my note card in here. And I have my runtime script, which is the PBR material texture changer script, but there's a piece that's missing. And that is, um, I actually don't like note cards and I don't want to have to read note cards at runtime while I'm running. I prefer that all this information gets stored in memory. And recently Second Life created a thing called link set data. So it's abbreviated LSD, like the drug, but it's not a drug. But it does get you high. Um, link set data is a persistent data store in an object. That's a key value database inside of an object, and it's persistent. So I can um, reset scripts on the object, and the memory, it, the, the data is still there. I can restart the sim. I can log out. I can log back in, and the data will still be there. <laughs> So what I do is I have a script called the PBR material LSD loader. And what this does is it reads all these note cards. It builds my menus and it takes the data from the note cards about the materials and, sh and sticks it in a database. And so that script is in my, in, in my object. And anytime there's a change to the inventory in here, in this directory, anytime there's a change, that script will rerun and reload this data. So while I'm working as a builder, while I'm working on this furniture and I'm making changes to it and I'm applying new texture, nothing happens. But once I create that new note card and then I drop that new note card in here, this script detects that I did that and will automatically upload, the, upload those changes to the database. <laughs> And it, first thing it does is it wipes the database. So it just deletes the entire database and then it reconstructs the database from the note cards that are in here. So you don't want to delete your note cards until you're absolutely done. And you, you don't have to delete the note cards ever. You could leave the note cards in here and ship the product. You can leave this LSD loader script in here and ship the product. It won't interfere with anything. It won't conflict with anything. And anytime there are changes made to this, it will reload them. But for a finished product, that you're ready to put out to market, you actually can run this script. And once the script finishes, it tells you it's over here running and that it loaded and it loaded up the material. So once it's done with that, you can delete the, the, the material LSD loader script and you can delete all of these note cards from the object. Maybe you don't want to put them out there where people can see them. Maybe you just want to uh, keep them on your development version, but you don't want them in production. You don't want, want them going out to your customers. So you can delete them because the runtime script doesn't use them. It never looks at these note cards. It actually looks at the data that's in the LSD database. Um, but you cannot run this script if you haven't loaded the data because I didn't make it so that it, I don't want this texture changer script reading the note cards. That's slow. It's just not, it's just not efficient. So, <clears throat> so you have to actually do this at least once you have to load the data and then you can get rid of these if you want to. And I probably will, I'll, when I'm ready to ship this to a customer, I'll probably delete all these. And the only thing that'll be in here is this texture changer script. Um, but for now it's really convenient because I can make changes. I can go in here and edit this. I can make a change to a different uh, material. Say I put the wrong one in there. Like I have, that's a good example. Remember we saw one that was wrong? Which one was it? Blue quilted? Let's let's do that now. So here you go, blue quilted. Let's go to bedding, blue quilted. And I think pillow 
Okay, it wasn't blue quilted. Anybody remember which one it was? Gold. Yep, P1 on gold didn't change, right? So, okay, let's go ahead and we're going to edit this. And let's go down to the bedding gold. And here we go. P1 for bedding gold. And then I'm going to go down to my materials. Bedding gold right here. And I'm going to find pillow one. There's pillow one. I'm going to copy it. And then I just come in here and I go to pillow one. And, and paste it. And I hope it's not E651, E7. It is. Weird. Why? Hmm. This might be this might be the wrong file. So I may have a different problem. Because I just pasted it and it came out the same. It says could not find render material. Hmm. I don't know if that's a bug or not. Okay. Don't know why what's going on with that one. I may have to troubleshoot this more. But let's because I know that error comes if it can't find the note card or if the note card's empty, but note card is there. So let's try it. Let's go to purple haze. That works. And then let's do it again. Try gold. Yeah, for some reason, there's something wrong with this. doesn't work so I'm going okay how do I fix that well I go back to here and then for p1 which is pillow one just turn the gold on and then go export export textures and then I can turn off everything it doesn't matter because I can turn off everything and just do the pillow one export <clears throat> then go back to Second Life, build, upload, material. This time instead of doing bulk, I'm just going to do the one. It's still in the same file name, Murphy Bed Final. Then it's going to try to open that, and then I do save. Since I only had the one material in there, there's only one, so it should come out into my materials folder. There. This one. That's the one I just uploaded, so I'm going to cut that from here. I'm going to go back down into here, and I'm going to paste it in here. Then I will get rid of this one. Now I will copy its UUID, and I'll go in here to Bedding Gold. And overwrite that with this new. How come it has the same? It has the same. That's impossible. It cannot have the same. I can't have the same UUID. It's a different item. I deleted the one that was in here, right? So that would be in my trash. Not there. Okay. Let's go back to my materials. Let's try it again. I'm going to upload it. And I'm going to rename it. Because I don't know what it's doing. Build, upload, material from here. I'm going to do save as. And I'm going to call it test hello one. And then let's see what happens. It has to have a different UUID because it's, it's a different part. Why has it got the same UUID? That's impossible. See, that one has a different one. That has a 
has a different UUID. That has a different UUID. Why does this have the same UUID? It has the same UUID. As apart from... All right, so this is not a problem with my scripts. This is not a problem with anything. This is a weird problem with SL right now. Something is going on where it's generating multiple objects. These are completely different objects. I'll, I'll upload it again. Build, upload, material. And this one we'll do save as, and we'll call it test pillow 2. So now it's a different object. So there's two separate objects. And they have the same UUID. That's not possible. That's just weird. Okay, well... Anyway, so let's not worry about that problem for now. <laughs> I can't solve world hunger. Though, I don't know why. That is just, that's mind-boggling. I'm going to spend some time trying to figure that out, but that's mind-boggling. Um, needless to say, that's not going to work if it has the same UUID. And I bet you that, what is that? Is that the same as the blue one? Hmm. I'm not going to close this. Just minimize it. Well, no, it's a purple one in there now. I don't think that's a valid UUID. And that's why it's, it's giving me this error. Because it can't find... It's looking for the material with that UUID, and it can't find that UUID. Huh. How, that is mind-boggling. It's not. Everything in my brain says, this is not possible. Okay, but it did. So anyway, uh, if I figure that out, I'll let you know why it's doing that. But until I can figure that out, um, this gold material isn't working right. What happens if I apply that directly? Let me try doing that. Yeah, it's gold. Oh, uh, dumb, dumb. Well, for one thing, that's not pillow one. That's pillow one. So I just put that pillow material on here. So I don't want pillow one anyway. I want pillow. Well, why is it got the same? Oh. Well, partially as I'm, an, I'm being an idiot. I want that. I don't want to change that pillow one because that's pillow one. Gold. Okay. So pillow one is right. That's what I want. That is the gold pillow. So it saved me. What I want is pillow three. Right? So let me go back to here. Maybe that's what. Oh, that's what's going on. Okay. It's doing exactly what it's supposed to. I'm exporting pillow one. I didn't export pillow three. I okay. Duh. All right. So this is not pillow one that I want gold. It's pillow three that I want gold. So let's, pillow three needs to be gold. There we go. Now if I export instead of pillow one, let's export the right pillow. Okay, now let me go in here and do build, upload, material, and we will save it, and it should come up and say pillow three this time. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and drop it on the pillow just to test it, make sure it's right. 
it is correct. That is the right texture. Then let's go ahead and copy its UUID and let's edit it into that note card. Pillow three. Please don't be 0204. Then I really will freak out. Huh? It's not 0204, but it's 204. I wonder if that, why would it be the same? But anyway, not going to worry about that. But maybe there was a leading zero by mistake. Okay, save it. Let's try to run it. Oh, it's, it takes a couple seconds. When you make any changes at all, when you have the, um, when you have my script in there, the um, LSD loader script, whenever you have a, that script in your furniture and you make a change like that and save something, it reruns it. And, and so you get this message, you, you it's not going to work. Uh, it doesn't break anything. It's just not going to, it's not going to do what you think until it finishes loading. So it finished loading. So now I can run it. <clears throat> Let's go to bedding and we'll pick a different bedding. Now let's go back, pick gold. And still doesn't work. And it gives this message. Okay. There's some kind of problem here with this. I don't know what the problem is. <clears throat> I have no idea what the problem is with that. But I will try and figure it out because it, that material, something about material for that pillow is not right. And I have no idea why. Only for this one texture set. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, so that's what it is. That's how it works, sort of. <laughs> Except for this one problem. Um, I'm probably not going to release this until I have this problem fixed. But anyway, I want to go ahead and get this video up and out so people can look at it. Anyway, that's the way the texture changer is working right now. So you can change textures. You can, oh, I have, I'm going to turn debug off. I think I have debug on. No, I don't. Oh. <laughs> I, I was in a hurry yesterday when I wrote my debug script. I forgot to put if debug. Okay, I'm not. <laughs> so debug was on no matter what. All right, so now debug is off. Let me check the other one to make sure. Uh, this one actually does check it. Okay. <sighs> Bedding. Blue quilted. Okay, just don't choose my gold material and everything else works so you can see it's changing the textures so again to reiterate my material changer is going to come with three scripts the first script um, is used to dump out the data for the materials that you have on the object so that you can create a note card. The second script takes the information from the name of the note card and the contents of the note card, generates the menus, and stores the data in a persistent database inside of the object, from which point you can then remove those scripts and remove the note cards and you don't need them anymore. And then the third script is the runtime script that reads the data from the database and will change the give the menu to the user and then change the textures based on what they pick from the menus so 
it's working pretty well. It's working, it's working well enough for me to get my job done and then I can make changes to it. I don't know why this one isn't working. I'll try and figure that out. And if I do, I'll either post an update or I will put a note in the video comments. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and post this video so that you guys can, can check this out. If you want copies of these scripts, let me know. I can work with you on that. I will be putting them out once they're once they're ready. I will be putting them up on sale uh, cheaply. Uh, there will be two versions. There will be a version for individual users to use for their personal use. And then there will be uh, a version for builders. It won't be full perm because uh, I won't. it won't be modified. You won't be able to read the scripts, but... You'll be able to use them. I'm also going to I'm also going to be adding APIs to allow you to do some interesting things with the scripts. For example, um, I'm going to have a state on this bed open and closed, and when the bed is um, open, it's going to look like this. But when the bed is closed, I actually want I want this to be physically located here. Right? I'm going to move it. And then what will happen is when it's um, in the open state, this will be hidden. And when it's in the closed state, it will be shown and these will be hidden. And um, they're using textures. So I need to make sure that I don't show you the textures for the wrong part at the wrong time. So I'm going to have a script that will say, okay, if this flag is set, don't show these textures, which the base script doesn't have that today, but I I'll be adding that. So you'll be able to do stuff like that. Um, I'm also going to have an API to do things so you can do stuff like I want to have. So this this cabinet and this cabinet have the same wood textures, right? It would be nice if I don't have to go to both of them and change them because if... Uh, I could have a master and a slave, so I'll I'll be setting it up so that you can put uh, you can put this into the slave mode, and then whenever you make a change here, it will hear that change and it will change to the corresponding wood. So whenever this calls wood oak, it's going to say on a certain channel, it's going to say wood oak. This thing will be listening, and we'll see that aha. I was told to change to wood oak and it will adjust. So that will be part of it too. It's not part of it right now, but it will be part of it. So there'll be some things like that coming with it too that will be good for builders to be able to um, take advantage of. But that's going to be in the more advanced version, which will be down the road. So the basic version, just because nobody has one out there and you can't, you, if you're a builder, you can't put stuff out there if you can't make changes to your textures. So I'm putting this out. I'll, I'll probably put it out today with the caveat that there might be something wrong with it <laughs> because I don't know why that one's not working. And if anybody can tell me why it's not working, please do. Anyway, uh, that's it for this video. I will talk to you guys later uh, with more stuff coming. So.